and Dave Hamill is about to address you on the topic of what capital homesteading would mean for entrepreneurs and small businesses. Amen? Please welcome Dave Hamill. Thank you, Bob, and all of CESJ, and the members of the Coalition for Capital Homesteading. And that is a great question. How will capital homesteading affect small business and the entrepreneur? It's a very important question because the SBA numbers show that more than half of all new jobs are created by small businesses. So they are essential for our economy. And that's exactly why I support the one thing that will explode small business growth, capital homesteading. Before I explain how, let me say to anyone with suspicions, I really am Dave Hamill, not Mike Huckabee. I actually worked on his 2008 campaign, though, and more than once I found myself being hugged and kissed by little old ladies who had left their eyeglasses at home. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you know, I look a little bit like him, and I think a little bit like him, but I'm, I'm not trying to claim that this diverse coalition is made up of Huckabee supporters. But you may benefit from some of the things I learned working with those economic conservatives, many of whom were business owners. We were looking for leaders and reform proposals that are fresh and creative, which help the average productive American without using tax money or government bureaucracy. But unfortunately, the campaign's common sense solutions were not backed by the establishment. Even Rush Limbaugh criticized Huckabee, calling, calling him a populist. But when the top 1% is worth more than the bottom 90%, why is it bad to be called what Abe Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt, and even Ronald Reagan were? They all found ways to help average Americans own productive farms, shops, and family enterprises by passing laws like the original Homestead Act and keeping what I call a low burden environment for these essential small businesses. But I admit, certain kinds of populism can be bad. Good populism helps the average person without tax and spend redistribution. Bad populism does use tax money and creates bureaucracy. I think understanding this distinction is one of the reasons for Ronald Reagan's success. But conservatives today rarely mention support of employee ownership and appointing Norm Curlin to the Task Force for Economic and Social Justice. And they never mention Ronald Reagan in his endorsement of industrial homesteading, now called capital homesteading. But these are good examples of populism. Politically, they get votes. And more importantly, economically, they produce wealth and put it in the hands of many without taxes or bureaucracies. Some say we need more government programs to help small business, even if they involve bureaucracy. Well, standing here in the home of what is unfortunately the largest buyer on earth, the U.S. government, I'm reminded of my most recent experience with bureaucracy. I was selling a product on a small scale to some federal prisons and DOD facilities, and some of the buyers said, Dave, you need to get a GSA contract. Well, I decided to try, and I spent about four months of sleepless nights restructuring the order systems, catalogs, putting non-discrimination policies in writing, filling out online and paper forms, inputting data into and learning their antiquated, clumsy SIP software system, and of course, spending money for printing, PC upgrades, third-party certifications that took weeks, and as you can imagine, dramatic increases in the coffee and ibuprofen budgets. Well, we did eventually get the GSA contract, but the story doesn't have a happy ending. We picked up some business, and although we had the best product at the best price, the buyers preferred large business vendors with hundreds of field reps. After three years, when it came time for renewal, the time-consuming requirements became too hard to justify. So that's what I know about the GSA. What you know from the news lately is equally disturbing. Ironically, one of the worthless forms I had to fill out involved forecasting annual contract value. Optimistically, I put down a target of 850000 Well, that number did turn out to have GSA significance, but sadly, it was not my sales volume. 
It was the exact amount of hardworking citizens' money the GSA spent throwing a contrived, lush award ceremony in Las Vegas for their made-up jackass award. Well, I hope I was at least a nominee for that award, for believing I could achieve small business success by dealing with the government. <laughs> and apparently, I'm not the only one the bureaucrats can laugh at. Last year's survey of small business owners by the SAGE Group found that government bureaucracy is the biggest problem to surmount in small business. No, government is not the solution to what ails businesses. So what is the answer? Well, the main thing small business needs is very simple, yet harder and harder to find, and that is customers with money. Can you say that with me? Customers with money. I'll need you to say it again, so I'm going to wake up the choir here. I'll give you a cue. See, I've been selling a transportation service in the Atlanta market for years. Recently, it became harder and harder to make a profit doing so. After several adjustments, instead of getting better, the numbers got worse, showing a bottom line loss. Finally, I took the exact same service to South Texas, and immediately the profit margin came back, and all the bills are paid. The only difference is the oil boom there has created customers with money. In the rest of the country, the lack of customers with money is the reason for business failures. It is not complicated. So should we move every business to Texas and North Dakota? No. We should pass the Capital Homestead Act to infuse money into every household so all over the country we will have customers with money. We should not repeat the same failed techniques we've already tried to accomplish this. Quantitative easing, as well as our everyday monetary policy, gives money through free interest credit to the banks and the financial sector, not the citizens. When I was a futures broker, I noticed one thing the banks and their favored customers do for a return in these situations is to invest heavily in commodities. Have you looked at the pump lately? The price of gas? It's crazy. That drives up the cost of everything the poor and middle class families and small businesses need to operate. Not only fuel, but also, you know, feeds, everything's traded, you know, commodity related, and our monetary policy is what is killing us. And you've heard many other reasons today here why our current policies have only made our citizens lousy customers, not customers with money. <laughs> uh, it's time for a Fed policy that inserts the American citizen into the no interest investment money loop. Then consumers will build wealth and become customers with money <laughs> to buy from America's small businesses. The answer to the ails of small business in this country is capital homesteading. I say the opposite of populism is elitism, which describes our current monetary system. We all know the stats show our middle class shrinking. It's because we have both economic elitism for the rich and dependency socialism for the poor. And unfortunately, the middle is joining the lower, not the higher group. Business people, our customer base is going away. So where are the proven examples that you can look to of how to make a better customer base to get customers with money? Well, a study of employees in the state of Washington showed that retirees from corporations with ESOPs, employee share ownership plans, have three times the wealth of those retiring from non-ESOP jobs. So if you have a business, imagine this. What if your market was all ESOP retirees? Would you need a government agency to help you succeed? No, because you have customers with money. It wasn't a tax and spend bureaucratic program that made ESOP employees great customers. Just a good populist law that allows the existing of a creative business structure. Well, small business owners, the entire United States population can be your ideal market customers with money. The equivalent of an ESOP plan for every citizen is a capital homestead account. To make your business boom, you need to simply join us at the Coalition for Capital Homesteading. 
Go to CapitalHomestead.org today and help us get this legislation passed. Thank you.